Hello, you're watching The Small Business Show Video Edition, and we're about to make The Small Business Show Radio Edition. Ready, Caelan? Absolutely. Hello and welcome to The Small Business Show. My name is Conor Mwinechon. And I'm Caelan Curran, editor of FocusMeIsland.com, the online showcase for Irish small businesses and innovation. Joining us on Skype is iPhone app developer Doni Kelly. Hello, Doni. Hello, Con. How are you? Very good. Thanks for joining us. Later in the show, we'll talk about the new Hireland Pledge initiative to encourage companies to hire. And this week on The Company Focus, I pay a visit to Uru Artisan Food Store and Cafe in Bandon, County Cork. You're back to the artisan food again, Caelan. Fair play to I you. I can't stay away. All right. Uh, let's deal with the stories that we've got on the website this week. The website, of course, is focusmeireland.com. That's where you'll find uh, the latest stories that we talk about each week on the website and uh, each week on the radio show as well. That's also how you can contact us. We'll start with this story and uh, we've got some uh, an interview to go with it as well, Caelan. This is one of your In Focus series of podcasts uh, you spoke to a lady from Intertrade Ireland. That's right, Margaret Harty. And uh, she was telling me about how uh, there's 85 million euros worth of angel investor money out there uh, on the island of Ireland and how they're looking to invest uh, in small businesses. So I asked her, what exactly are inv- angel investors and what do they do? Well, they're high net worth individuals. Some of them have are entrepreneurs, serial entrepreneurs in their own right or, or senior industry people. And they can bring so much to a company, and not only in terms of cash, but it's the experience they can bring. You know, if you're an entrepreneur, really you should look for an angel that is experienced in the industry that you're trying to start up in. Mm. They'll bring access to a wealth of contacts that can bring international sales experience, all the type of experience that companies need to grow their business. And it's taking advantage of those connections and that network as well, isn't it? That's part of it, as you say, not just the well, finance. Well, that's it. And I think a key thing is companies will always need more money and follow-up money. And if you have an angel, a private individual who's put their hard-earned cash into your business, that brings you know fantastic credibility when you go to formal venture capitalists looking for further rounds of funding, or indeed if you go to the bank or you go to a customer and the customer understands what so brings an awful lot of credibility to the individual business. That's Margaret Harty there from Intertrade Ireland uh, organising the 11th annual Intertrade Ireland Venture Capital Conference on March the 7th in Belfast. There's a theme for this year, this year's conf- uh, conference, uh, Caelan, isn't there? Navigating the funding... Navigating the funding maze is the uh, theme for this year. And uh, I think uh, a lot of small businesses out there will, will really, really appreciate that. You When when they go to this event, um, it's not pitching to to investors or possible investors. What it actually is, is you get to mingle mm-hmm. with investors and talk to them first uh, before you go out and, and, and make your pitch to them later on. But this will give you an opportunity to mingle with event- investors and ask what they're looking for. Getting feedback from investors is a great idea, Donny, isn't it? But um, what I like about this conference is uh, that it's an actual opportunity to find some investors. Uh, angel investors, we don't hear a lot about them in this country, do we? No, I suppose we see a lot of it on TV um, at the moment, uh, Con. Um, Dragon's Den. Finding, yeah, exactly. And find, but finding investors like those is probably um, it's it's a tough it's a tough ordeal, and they'll they look for they probably give you a harder time than they do on TV. I, I guess so. And, and again, Margaret makes the point as well uh, in that interview that uh, you should try and find an investor that has experience, connections and uh, networking ability in the actual area that, that you're involved in, Caelan, doesn't she? Yeah. And, and the area that you're involved in, whatever your business is, to find somebody who has a similar type of business or has owned a similar type of business. OK, we'll move on. The next story on the website at FocusMeIreland.com. The headline, France to develop state bank for small business loans. This sounds like a good idea. Yeah, this was an interesting story that came out uh, from France this week about they're going to develop a state bank um, that's going to set aside in the region of about 20 billion euros uh, for small businesses uh, to give out in loans to them. Um, This was really uh, something that was that was quite interesting. And and one of the, the guys who is at the head of all of this, uh, Francois, Francois Drouin, um, he said that while it was clear that France uh, banks were cutting back uh, and credit o- on credit overall, there was no sign as yet that small and medium-sized companies were being affected. So he's he's basically saying that, uh, you know, 
it's important to have this, but but in French small business, uh, it's not necessarily a necessary thing. Probably even more necessary here. And yet, now I know there are talks of uh, something similar and a credit scheme being set up uh, mm. in this country to uh, to help small and medium uh, enterprise. So it's an interesting idea from from that point of view. Badly needed, uh, would you say, Donny? Yeah, investment is always a difficult thing because everything, starting a business is expensive and there's a lot of hidden costs. Um, even just development of websites and, and basic tools mm. can be quite expensive. Um, it's interesting to note that the French bank has a capital of $1 billion and they're, they're going to be able to provide credit of up to $12 billion. It's an interesting uh, well, point of thought. Yeah, well, banks can always lend, I think, more than they have in their capital, <laughs> yes. but uh, it's, it's a question of the ratio, and I think that's been the problem in Ireland, that uh, yeah. uh, banks have been uh, overexposed lending-wise uh, compared to the, the capitalisation that they actually have. Mm. Uh, next one is a good one. Employers abandoning traditional ways to advertise jobs. We know that media is changing, Caelan. That's having an impact on uh, recruitment. Yeah, this was a, a very interesting story uh, that came out this week about a survey from uh, e-recruitment software firm Candidate Manager who said that employees uh, are looking at different ways to advertise jobs now. They're turning down um, the more the, the social media and the jobs boards kind of websites, uh, particularly the likes of LinkedIn, which uh, basically 92% uh, of those surveyed said that they use LinkedIn uh, to advertise a job in their in their business. It's interesting. And uh, Donny, I, I know you're an independent software developer. You're involved in, in a venture we're going to talk about in a minute, but um, you're also, you also do contract work uh, for people. Do you find how do you find it getting jobs? How do you go about it? Uh, are you uh, uh, circling the ads in your local paper? Where do you find the jobs that you're looking for? I, the last couple of jobs, um, would you believe, kind of been through the traditional method, through um, employment agencies. Right. Um, I do use LinkedIn and I, I use my own work as a showcase to get new work as well. So I think that's important. And um, <clears throat> This article showed the value of social media, um, that people have it for their business and also that they're advertising jobs through it um, because right now everything is about bottom line. And if you're going to spend, you know, 100 odd quid or 60 odd quid or whatever and to advertise, you know, on a website or, or advertise in a local newspaper or something, you know, you've got social media where there are literally for some companies thousands of people following you and all you have to say is I've, I've got a job available is there anybody that wants mm. it and you'll get a reply by the end of the day Job Fairy was a hashtag I saw being used on uh, on uh, Twitter at one point um, did you come across that uh, Donny? No I haven't come no, across that no. one no. Uh, So you asked the Job Fairy uh, to either find you a job or indeed find you an employee <laughs> We'll move on one more story these are the kind now you love this is your you've been dying to talk about this oh, one, This is my favourite story the whole week We do we, we cover these a lot these are stories that uh, involve inventions clever ideas startups uh, brilliant uh, kind of ideas tell me about this one Vapor yeah, this is a, this is a, a podcast I did earlier in the week, and it's called the Necess- necessity is the mother of invention, and it's, it's called vapor dryer. Mm. And effectively, what it is, it's a new way to dry and iron your clothes at the same time. So basically, what he's done is he's invented this kind of almost like a bladder bag, and all you have to do is hook your your um, your hair dryer mm. onto it, and it will it will uh, dry your clothes and iron them at the same time using this bladder bag. What's his name? His name is Tony Kelly. Very good. And there's a photograph indeed of this bag in action on the website at FocusMeer, FocusMeIreland.com. Here's what Tony had to say about where he got the idea. I was in a factory that makes airbeds. They had a particular problem of trying to keep the heat out of the airbed as they pumped the air in. And I realised at that moment that would be a solution to the drying problem. If I could keep actually push the heat in to a bladder shape, I'd be able to control the air going through the jumpers and I'd be able to push the air through the jumpers in the water out. So I got, went home and I made up a simple fabric ladder, balloon-shaped thing, and I put a hairdryer into it and I was astonished at how quickly it dried. What a guy. He try, he's, he gets an idea, he says, I'm going to try it. And as you pointed out, people can hear this in the, the full interview on the website of FocusMeIreland.com, but this isn't the first bright idea that he's had. No, he, he basically came up with a precursor to what is now uh, Google Street View uh, and he did it in Dublin. Um, okay. So basically, this guy is a, is a serial entrepreneur, he's a serial inventor. Um, but one of the great things I loved about it was mm. that he turns around to near the end of the conversation we had and he said, uh, I want this to be the next microwave for, for uh, you know, drying uh, and, uh, and ironing your clothes. So he wants one in every home. Um, and I certainly think he's, it's certainly possible because it's, it's so simple, yet it's a brilliant idea and everyone should have one. A computer on every desk, as Bill Gates said, and a vapor in every home, Donny. What do you think? I think it's something I'd buy myself. 
especially if you're going traveling. Absolutely. That's right. looks very useful. That's, that's mm. right. Um, Dolly, tell us about your own, your own uh, work. You, I know you're involved, as you say, in uh, independent software development and, and as a software development contractor. Um, you are, we, we've been talking about people developing iPhone apps. That's one of the things you do. And in particular, you're working with um, one of the uh, companies involved in uh, a proposal for a new postcode system for Ireland. Tell us about that. Yeah, yes, Locate Code are based in County Cork. They're they're in the business quite a while, but they came up with the Locate Code, which is a, an eight-digit code, um, which will pinpoint you within six meters anywhere in Ireland. Um, what I've done for them as part of over the last year since their launch is we've written the um, iPhone app, um, which the latest version is due in iTunes next week, actually. Um, the iPhone app allows you to generate a postcode where you're currently standing on your mobile phone. So it it will generate a postcode right where you are. You can also use Google Maps to pinpoint somebody else's location or a house or a business, generate a locate code for that address. Um, The app will allow you to navigate to those addresses as well. Whether you receive it, you can send the address or the postcode via SMS or email, Facebook, Twitter, the usual social media outlets. Um, When it's received on on your own phone, you can navigate to it using any of your built-in applications on the phone for navigation like um, TomTom, Google Maps, um, Navigon. Or whatever. It, it again and again. Every time you fill out a form online, you have to invent a postcode because uh, it, it's considered obligatory in other countries, Donny. And yet we yes. don't have an official postcode system here. No, and it's not an official postcode yet. And the government have po- postponed having an official postcode until at earliest 2014. So, locate code are doing business now and and have a locate. I have an address code that works and mm. is in use in thousands of websites around Ireland. So the, the, is, is it likely perhaps in a way that, you know, we might just all start using this system and, uh, and steal a march on the government in relation to that, well, official a, or not? As an independent software developer, I hope so, because yeah. uh, I'm selling the app up, application, obviously, <laughs> in with Locate Code. But, uh, and we have a free version as well for those people who want to try it out and just see what it's about. Where can people find out more, Donny? Um, find out more at locatecode.com. Oh. And the app is point eight is available on, on iTunes. Excellent. That's Donny Kelly, independent uh, software developer. And that, I think, is something we'll come back to again, because I know that people are talking about uh, uh, postcodes and uh, business indeed lost and time lost uh, due to difficulties in getting delivered. Well, there's a, there's a duality there, isn't there? It's a postcode and, and almost a sat-nav as well. Very good. FocusMeIreland.com is the website. If you visit it, you can read these stories. You can listen to those interviews in full. You can hear this show all over again if you want. And you can watch the videos that we've put up there as well. And it's also a way to contact us. You can uh, fill out the contact. Contact form or leave a comment indeed on the website as well.